Hello, uh, I'm going to teach you uh, about the Rutherford experiment. Um, so before we do that, we just kind of uh, need to set the set the scene in terms of what scientists kind of know at this point. Uh, so uh, let's go back to uh, 1803. John Dalton, uh, he proposed atoms. Uh, he proposed atoms, uh, or each chemical element was made up of a single type of atom, or yeah, a small particle. Um, so back then, 1803, no atoms had been discovered. This was just kind of theorised. Um, so they didn't know anything that was the made up the atom. So they didn't know anything about protons, they didn't know anything about neutrons, and they didn't know anything about electrons. Back then, he just came up with the idea, and it was just a particle, a, a ball, a thing, a, you know, not, not much. It was just an atom. And each element uh, on the periodic table had a different atom. That was his theory. Um, then we go across to 1897, a bit later on, uh, and J.J. Thompson, who is a strange looking child, um, he did experiments with cathodes, uh, basically two electrodes, and what he did was he had two electrodes normally made of something like graphite or any other conducting material, and he put a large amount of electricity through them. Um, and if you did that uh, in a kind of a tube with no air, um, you could get the electrons traveling along. Uh, if you put different gases in, you got um, these kind of, uh, this kind of looks like, like a neon light is made. Um, so he had these two electrodes here. Here is, here's an electrode here and another electrode there. And he put a large potential difference across it. So we've got a lot of um, uh, electric current flowing through. Uh, and that's how he discovered the electrons. Uh, and this is what's happening through. We have electrons traveling through here. Um, and that's what's making this glow. Um, so that was the first introduction to the electron. Uh, he discovered the electron. He won the Nobel Prize um, for discovering that. Uh, I don't think he called it the electron. He called it something like the corpuscle or something weird like that. But that was how the electron was discovered. So um, he used that to adapt the theory of the atom. And he came up with a plum pudding model. Plum pudding is a dessert. Um, might be called a spotted dick if uh, that's what you want to call it but basically uh, or in more modern like a blueberry muffin um, he knew that the atom uh, is neutral so what does that mean positive and negative must balance okay he knows that the atom is neutral because we know atoms uh, in the periodic table don't have any charge so it must have an equal amount of positive and negative we now know, thanks to J.J. Thompson, that this negative is from electrons. Okay, so we know we've got electrons and we know electrons are really small. He worked out how small they are from this experiment here um, because the force, um, the energy that was transferred across um, means that they must be very, very small. So we know we have very, very small electrons, but we don't know about protons and we don't know about neutrons. So he theorized this thing the plum pudding model, which is basically a big sponge of positivity uh, with these little electrons peppered all the way through. Uh, and the overall big plus is cancelled out by the lots of little negatives. And that is the plum pudding model. Uh, so a uh, big positive sponge uh, with some negative electrons plums all the way through and so it's neutral um, and there we go and that's the theory of the atom for a period of time uh, a few years later a man called Ernest Rutherford here he is this is the dude Rutherford um, he set two of his students uh, Hans Geiger Ernest Marsden this is Geiger I couldn't find a photo of Marsden um, to do an experiment and it is uh, the gold foil experiment um, and it's um, a very famous experiment. Uh, first of all, uh, gold uh, is a very um, special metal. Uh, it's not reactive at all, uh, one of the reasons they use it, but one of the other reasons they use it is it's very malleable. M -A -L -E -R. It's very malleable, which means you can hammer it really, 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 really thin. Um, if you take a square cubic centimeter of um, gold 
you can hammer it out so it covers like the ceiling of like a classroom in the school uh, you can hammer it so thin you can get it to 0.1 microns which is um, less than a micrometer which is a very 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 small amount so when we're talking about thin gold leaf if you picked it up we're gonna have things that would just crumble uh, almost to dust uh, and it's very thin uh, so um, if you're using it to fire things through you're only going to get you know in that case maybe a few hundred atoms maybe a thousand atoms that it's going to fire through whereas a other thing is going to be hundreds of thousands of millions of atoms so you can make it really thin a really thin um, and what Geiger and Marsden did was they had this experiment where it was here's the gold so this is my piece of gold leaf 3d uh, and they fired alpha particles at it like this this is my alpha gun and the alpha particles were fired through the gold leaf and then what they have is they have this kind of photo detector which is basically um, a screen and then when the alpha particles hit it it flashes so they fire these alpha particles and they go through the gold because it's really 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 thin and it hits the screen and so what a guy Graham Marsden had to do thanks to Rutherford was they had to do this all in like a dark box or a dark room and stare and they just had to stare at this thing and wait for a flash and they did it for ages for absolutely ages like thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of times this thing happened so a long long time they fired an alpha particle at a bit of gold and they watched what happened and it came out the other side and most of the time nothing happened most of the time nothing happened let's flick to an animation uh, going to our friends over at FET. If you don't know FET, you're missing out. So, uh, most of the time it happened, and this is what they thought. Here's my plum pudding. A big plum uh, filled sponge. All these little electrons. And if you fire an alpha particle through, uh, they just go through because the electrons are so tiny um, and the alpha particles are big. It doesn't make a difference. They don't care. They just go from one side to the other. Alpha particles are not um, deviated by electrons at all. Uh, nothing bothers them. Do you know what an alpha particle is? Let's just review what an alpha particle is. Okay, an alpha particle um, we know now is actually two protons and two neutrons. Two protons and two neutrons. Uh, it's the same thing as a helium nucleus, a helium that's lost its electrons. But remember back then they didn't know what protons were and they didn't know what neutrons were and they hadn't worked out whatever but basically if you remember your relative masses um we have uh, protons now have a relative mass of one let's go proton mass is relatively one and a neutron's mass is one um, and an electron's mass is about one two thousandth uh, relatively so a proton weighs 2,000 times sorry a proton has 2,000 times mass of an electron so a um, alpha particle uh, is roughly 8,000 times heavier uh, than an electron okay 8,000 times heavier than an electron okay so if we go back to this and we fire our alpha particles through um, what we would expect for something that's 8,000 times heavier than the electrons, nothing to happen. Uh, and the sponge is just a sponge, so they just fly on through. Nothing really happens. Um, but there were some expected results. Actually, if I remember rightly, um, Rutherford, they came back with their results and nothing, they didn't see anything. So Rutherford made them go back in. That's Rutherford again. He made them go back in, and this time he updated it. So whereas originally there's the uh, alpha gun, and it's firing alpha at the piece of gold, like this. And originally they were looking around here at the screen. He made them look behind. He made them put another screen behind to look. And they didn't expect anything to happen, because why would they? Because all these alpha particles are going straight through nothing should happen but do, do, do. quote from Rutherford um, 
It was the most incredible event that had ever happened to me in my life. It was almost in as incredible as if you fired a 15 inch shell at a piece of tissue paper and it came back and hit you. Basically, uh, strange things happened. And let's look at the Rutherford atom. Um, he fired the alpha particles and, um, let's up the energies, make it more dramatic. He fired the alpha particles and most of the time you can see these alpha particles are just going straight through and nothing really happens. Every now and then, you see one getting a little bit deviated. It travels slightly to the side. But if you wait long enough, this is completely random, so we could be here sometime. Uh, one of them hits the nucleus head on and comes back. It bounces back. Come on, one of you. Come on, bounce back. Bounce back. Anyone? Nope. Just going to keep waiting. Some of them will bounce back. Maybe if I lower the energy, they'll more likely to bounce back. You see some of them are going off quite dramatic angles come on oh that was a good one. Oh, that one changed direction come on bounce back uh, in reality um, Hans Geiger and Ernest Marsden only saw one bounce back for every 8,000 that went through so we're probably gonna have to wait here quite a long time for one to bounce back one in every 8,000 bounced back that's not a lot let's lower let's lower the, the power so they're probably more likely to be deviated come on um, oh, we can zoom in. Here we go. Um, if we zoom in, and we have more likely, so some of them, there we go, there they are, they're just bouncing right back. This is what happens. They're bouncing back. So, if the original model was correct, if the plum pudding model was correct, every single one of those alpha particles should go through and come out the other side. And most of the time that did happen. But think about it. If you're firing something really heavy and it bounces back, it has to have hit something, okay? So we're firing one in 8,000 bounces back. Okay, so one in 8,000 is bouncing back. So what do we know about that? what's happened to that one in eight thousand well if it's bouncing back only one in eight thousand times what it's hitting must be move this up oops what it's hitting must be very small because seven thousand nine hundred ninety nine are making through only one in eight thousand are hitting so it has to be very 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 small it also has to be very dense because like we said Come on. Uh, an alpha particle is about 8,000 times heavier than an electron. So for it to deflect and bounce back alpha particle, it must be really, really dense. So small, but really dense to be able to withstand the bombardment of an 8,000 times heavier than an electron alpha particle. So we know it's very small, we know it's very dense. Um, what do we know about electrons? They're negative. Electrons are negative. Well, for these to bounce back, this um, uh, here, oh, I missed one thing. This thing here, uh, if this alpha particle, boop, 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 if this alpha particle is made from two protons and two neutrons, what's the charge of an alpha particle? plus two. An alpha particle is positively charged. So for them to be repelled, for it to bounce back, it has to be really small because only one in 8,000 bounces back. 7,999 go through. It has to be really dense because the alpha particles are really heavy. And it has to be positive because alpha particles are positive. So for them to be repelled, it has to bounce back. So he theorized, he changed his uh, theory of uh, what the atom was. So originally we had our plum pudding, but now he says, actually, we have a nucleus. Uh, a nucleus must be very small, very dense, oops, and positively charged. 
um, for these things that they saw happen. Um, he also said that the atom is mostly empty space. He said the atom's mostly empty space because obviously one in 8,000, one in 8,000 uh, bounce back. 7,999 just keep coming through. So most of that time, these alpha particles just keep coming through and nothing really happens. So uh, the Rutherford atom is like this. Um, so the electrons, all this space is empty and the alpha particles, sorry, the alpha particles come along uh, and most of them go through, but every now and then, oh look at that, that was a 90 degree out. Most of them um, go through, but every now and then, one of them uh, collides with the nucleus and bounces back. Therefore, uh, that nucleus must be more special than they originally thought. Uh, boop, there we go. Um, just worth noting, remember, remembering that um, he still didn't know what protons were and he still didn't know what neutrons were. So, uh, like the atom we know today uh, had to be developed a bit more and actually Rutherford was part of the process that helped discover the proton. Uh, the neutron wasn't discovered till many years later by a man called Chadwick. Uh, so, um, Rutherford did quite a lot of this. Um, also, Rutherford didn't know that um, electrons orbit in the shells. So basically, Rutherford's model of the atom was a nucleus and electrons. Uh, orbiting. Uh, he knew that they orbited but he didn't know that um, they orbited at particular heights in shells. Uh, why did he know they orbited? Why must they orbit? Because the nuclear is positive and electrons are negative, tiny electrons are negative. If they don't move they would just get drawn into the middle. They would just be dragged in and collapse in the middle. So the only way they can exist uh, is to orbit round like a satellite orbits the earth continually going round and round so it doesn't fall into the earth so it orbits around the nucleus um, which is very small very dense positively charged and mostly empty space uh, and now with orbiting electric now with orbiting electrons I hope that helps okay bye